<laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, hey, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Randy Pitchford. My company, Gearbox Software, makes video games. Uh, maybe you guys have played some of the games we've made. Uh, this is my friend, Penn. Hi. How you doing? Uh, some people know that before I became a game developer, I was a professional magician, and we thought since we're here to talk about video games and magic and the intersection between them and talk about a cool new project that we've been working on, that we should probably open with a magic trick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, some of you guys know that uh, Penn and Teller have a show on television called Fool Us. Uh, it's about the greatest magicians in the world trying to fool the greatest magicians in the world. Uh, I thought, I'm going to see how I can do. What do you think? Should I try to fool Penn? And it's a good time to talk about the word hubris. <laughs> Pride goeth before the fall, because Randy was a professional <laughs> magician. But he has told me that we're going to play fair, so uh, you want the gloves off, right? Let's do it. Like, okay, he's going to do a magic trick. I'm going to watch, and I'm telling you, whatever I see that I want to bust you on, I shall bust you on. I'm, okay? I'm ready. I'm, I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be. Uh, I'm not going to be nice because you're Mr. Fancy Pants Gearbox. Okay. <laughs> so you, uh, you go ahead, and we'll see. I'll just be right over here, right, busting your sweet ass. Let, let's do this. Um, uh, let's see, I'm going to need, actually, before we begin, by the way, what do you think, like, I know some people notice my clothes sometimes, my shirt, my jacket, what do you, you guys like my wardrobe, is it all right? Um, the, the reason why I'm calling it out is I actually have no fashion sense whatsoever. My wife dresses me, she actually, it's incredible, I don't know where she gets the stuff from, I, I go into my closet and there's just beautiful clothes, I don't know where she gets it from, uh, how much she pays for it, but it's just, it's cool, right? It's good, it's good stuff, right? Um, but uh, uh, I, do, I do want some help uh, from a couple of people, and I want to pick uh, someone at random. So I'm going to crumple up this piece of paper, throw it out into the audience. Whoever catches it, somebody catch that. Who's got it? <laughs> somebody got that? Uh, would you mind, uh, what's your name? Jorge. Jorge, would you mind um, standing up? As Jorge stands up, let's give him a round of applause. Jorge. Uh, Jorge, um, can you, uh, out loud, into the microphone, I want you to tell a number. Say a number between zero and nine. Any number. Seven. Seven. Everybody remember seven. Jorge, pass that uh, to someone else, and uh, someone at random, someone you don't know, Jorge. And, uh, and, and if you guys, uh, Jorge, would you mind actually coming up, helping us on stage? They're going to escort you over. Pass the mic. Uh, who's, got the, who's got the thing now? Uh, what's your name, sir? Joe, uh, uh, Joe, uh, a number, uh, actually two numbers. Let's do two numbers, two-digit number, any two-digit number. 22. 22. We have seven and 22. And Joe, would you mind helping me out on stage? Seven, 20, 22. 22. And pass, pass it to one other person, someone I don't know. Do you know that person? Someone you don't know. Someone, someone random. Throw it, toss it. Toss it. Oh. I don't know how the magic is, but the aerodynamics suck. <laughs> and what's your name? Federico. I'm sorry? Federico. Yes. Federico. Federico. Okay, so, so far we have seven and we you have 22. It. Imagine we're talking about money. Uh, how many cents? How many cents are we talking to? $722 and how many cents? 93 cents. 93 cents. And Federico, would you mind helping me out? 722 and 93 cents. Let's give a round of applause to Federico and all of our, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, come on up, uh, let's get them on stage. We're gonna need their help. Where are they? <laughs> it's a long walk apparently to get on stage. Um, yeah, come on, let's go, let's go hey, guys. Let's get you on out here, yeah, let's go. Watch, watch your step there. Good to see uh, you, good to see you. Federico, nice to meet you. Right. Um, Federico, I'm going to ask you to help me. Actually, um, yeah, you can help me here. You can be the guy. Uh, come up to this microphone. Uh, uh, 7, 7, 22, and 93 cents. Uh, Federico, before we began, uh, everybody saw the price tag on the back of my jacket. You have one job. I want you to read the price written on that price tag into the mic. 722 and 93 cents. Holy crap. It's, it's a miracle. It's... It's legit. 
It's legit, kind of, sort of. <laughs> okay, we'll talk later. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> thanks, thanks for your help. Um, would you mind helping me for, for one other thing? See, that was a demonstration of a, a, a genre of magic called mentalism. When I used to perform uh, and get paid for it, I used to like close-up magic, sleight of hand. I want you to look at that book. Uh, and, and it was, um, I, I think that sleight of hand is probably the most respected form of magic. It's really up there. Uh, and, and then, you know, you get like uh, box tricks and illusions. And then down below, probably the lowest form of magic is mentalism. Uh, so I'm going to perform a mentalism trick uh, for you. Uh, and uh, what I want to do is um, I want you to look through that book. That book has uh, a bunch of numbers in it. Can I show the audience? Yeah, show the audience. Uh, the book is called 10,000 Digits of Pi. You can buy it on Amazon.com. Uh, and it's... Uh, Sexy! It's, it's just got numbers. There is an introduction that talks about the history of pi. Pi is a, a beautiful number. It's, it's a, a, about the relationship between the circumference and the radius of a circle. And it affects almost everything about the physical properties of our world. It's, it's a beautiful number. And, and encompassed within it, it's infinite. It has every single possible combination of numbers that ever existed. Every possible combination. Uh, the, 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 everyone's birthday. All of your birthdays are in pi. Uh, the first picture you ever saw when you were born, if you could reduce it to numbers, is somewhere in, in Pi. The last picture you'll see before you die is in there. Every video game I've ever developed, the machine code, is in Pi. That also means that every video game I haven't yet developed is already in there. If I could find it in Pi, we could go home and we'd already have Borderlands 3. Right? Every game so. you should have done. <laughs> 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 Unfortunately, it's a big number, I gotta find it. Uh, I, I've started memorizing pi, if you can believe that. Um, and uh, I want you to flip through the book, we're gonna test this. Uh, I was gonna use this method uh, for a magic trick. I thought it'd be more interesting as a memory demonstration. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see which, which you prefer. Um, flip through the book, find a random page number. If you tell me the page number, I can tell you what digits are on there. You have a page number? Got it. What do you got? 71. Page 71, uh, the first digit on page 71 is a two, is that correct? Correct. And the second digit is a nine? Yes. And then a zero, is that right? True. Wow, so maybe I've memorized the first three digits on every page. Let's uh, make it harder. Would you mind passing the books to, to one of the other uh, friends here? Uh, uh, Joe? Joe, step up to the mic. Flip through the book. Make sure it's normal. I want you to find a different page. We're going to do a sequence now. You guys well, memory so far is good. You remembered his name, <laughs> which is much that's more than the I hardest, did. Yeah. 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 That's the hardest part. I'd totally trip. forgotten he was Joe. <laughs> I had no mnemonic on that. <laughs> uh, I told you I was a professional. Uh, the, uh, uh, okay, so flip to a random page. We're going to do a sequence. Um, a sequence, you, you guys have memorized sequences, right? Like you know the alphabet. So if I were to say L-M-N-O-P, you could then say... QRST, right. Show-offs. <laughs> uh, so if you've memorized all of pi, if I can pick up the sequence, I should be able to continue. Find a random page number. Uh, do actually, doesn't matter what page number it is. Find a random number somewhere on the page. Doesn't have to be at the top. Doesn't have to be at the bottom. Could be in the middle. Could be at the beginning of a line, end of a line, anywhere. Find a number. I'm going to ask you what the number is, and I'm going to ask you the numbers in order until I pick up the sequence. And then I'll be able to continue the sequence. Do you understand, Joe? Yes. First number that you're looking at. What is the first number you're looking at? Three. And the number after that? One. And the number after that? Seven. Okay, you, sometimes it takes me as many as seven digits to pick it up, so, so far you've given me three, one, seven, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, one more, give me another digit. Five. Okay, and another one? Four. One more digit. Six. Okay, so can you start at the beginning? I want to make sure I've picked up the sequence correctly. The first number is three. Yes. Then nine. No. No, it's a one. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, one, then, uh, then four. No. No, say it again. It's three, then one, then seven. One, three, seven. Three, one, seven. Sorry, three, one, seven. Yes. Then, what's next? Five. Yes, then one more. And four. Give me one more digit. I think, I can, I think I've got the sequence at this point. And then six. Is, 
is the next digit a one? Yes. And then a nine? Yes. And then a zero? Yes. And then an eight? Yes. Is this correct? Okay. That's right. Um, I'm going to keep going, and you can tell me when to stop or when you're bored. Um, uh, 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 four? That's right. Uh, nine? Yes. Uh, zero? Yes. Three? Yes. Eight? Four? Five? Wrong. Zero? <laughs> That's right. Did I miss one? You missed. You missed. Oh, one. so it's so it's it's zero. Then three. One. Then eight. Zero. Five. Correct. No. Okay. So we're <laughs> go back to where I was correct. The zero and the three and the eight were correct, and then after the eight, you got it wrong. Well, I got enough of them right to convince. <laughs> <you. laughs> let's let's do your birthday. Let's do your birthday. <laughs> Uh, let's do your birthday. What's your birthday? So yeah, let's take the book. I'm going to find your birthday. Yeah. Hand, hand on the book. Hand on the book. What, what, when's your birthday? Uh, August 9th. August 9th. That's um, 0809. Is that correct? Yes. 0809. Uh, I'm going to tell you where that is in the book. 0809. Um, uh, um, let's see. It's on page... Ooh, it's deep in the book. One one fifty seven. It's on page one fifty seven, and it is the eighth line. It's on the eighth line. Did I get it? Zero zero nine zero eight. No, it's is it zero eight zero nine? Yeah, because you're, 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 are you European? The no, month, the, 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 I got the day and the month reversed. Zero, zero, eight, zero, zero nine. Is that correct? Zero, zero, nine. All right, cool. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> uh, hey, thank you guys so much. Thank you for your help. What do you think, Penn? Do you have any idea how I did that? Uh, let me see. Well, the, the, let me see the book again. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't find anything gimmicked on the book. Uh, they weren't miscalling it. Uh, tag seems real. Um, I don't think you memorized pi out of 10,000 <laughs> places. I don't think you did that. Uh, as we know, there's no pattern in pi. Well, there are, there's every pattern in pi, but not one you could do in the first 10,000. So uh, I think, uh, I'm guessing you threw that directly. Who, who caught it when you first threw it to him? When you first threw it out? You, did you catch it or did it was handed to you? It was handed to me. It was handed to you. It was handed to you. So I think you're a plant. You've set it up with Randy beforehand? <laughs> no, I never said it. You, did, you didn't set up with Randy? No, I never Cause, did. Because, you know, on Fool Us, we don't allow plants. And there's, <laughs> there was no rule here. You didn't say no plants. So uh, when did you first meet Randy? Today. Do you work at Gearbox? <laughs> I don't know. You don't, <laughs> you don't know if you work at Gearbox, right? <laughs> Who are you here with? I was with my wife, and she's over there. Your wife's with your, your she wife? She passed me the paper. That, are you really his wife? <laughs> What's your name? Alicia. Alicia? Does he have any distinguishing birthmarks? <laughs> and then where did he go? Directly to you? Yes. And when, how long have you known Randy? <laughs> Since today. It wasn't, oh, today, earlier today in the, in the backstage? No, I was right now when the show started. Well, you're a plant. Come on, say it. No, I'm not going to say it. You're a plant! <laughs> You wish. You're a plant, goddammit! Nah. <laughs> and where did you get it from? Uh, someone tossed it and I grabbed it. You did what? I grabbed it under the... Under you the grabbed it. You yeah. grabbed it. It wasn't handed to you or given to you at all. No. So when did you start working with Randy? <laughs> didn't. Okay, they're all plants. Thank you so much. They're all plants. They admitted it. They're all plants. Get off the stage. They're plants. That's, that's how it's done. They're, uh, they're plants. They're, that's, that's my... They're not, they're not plants. They're plants. They're not plants. They're plants. That's my best <laughs> guess. Plants. They're not plants. Plants. What, what do you say? Oh, come on. Are they? You, do you guys? He, he watch. Gonna, watch who the you way he believe? interacts with her. He's never seen her before in his life. <laughs> you watch. You watch if there's any real affection there whatsoever. There better be some serious affection when he first gets back to his seat. That's just a random person you sat next to. You watch her. You watch her. Oh, so <laughs> plant. Look how planty she is. Look at. Look at the fake smile. She is so. She is about to sprout. 
She is so planty. <laughs> she has got. She is so plant. Look at. Watch this. Watch this. We're, we're going to talk about this later. Never met before in <laughs> their lives. <laughs> Never. Look how she's she's turning away from them. The body language says plant, 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 <laughs> plant. And you know what? something else? He's memorized 10,000 digits of pi. <laughs> That's the way you did it. Right there. Oh my God. We're going to talk about this later. She doesn't I know him. Uh, in her life, never met him. This is going to be a thing. I, um, so, what do you what do you say we talk about what we're here for? What do you yeah. think? So we're here yeah. to bust him on full up <laughs> with plants. That's done. What's the next order of business? <laughs> so, Penn and I have been working on a cool project together. Uh, it's it's we're, it's it's a magic trick in VR, basically. It's called Penn and Teller's VR. Frankly, unfair, unkind, unnecessary, and underhanded. Which abbreviates to Penn and Teller. F U U U and U. <laughs> Referring, of course, to the three plants. <laughs> F U U U and U. Exactly. <laughs> Look at her. She's laughing like she's never seen him before. <laughs> That's what she finds funny. They're not ha, plants, ha, ha. Ben. I'm sitting next to a stranger. That's what she's laughing about. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Uh, this is cool, though. We got to work together to use virtual reality to mess with people, right? If you've ever wanted to do magic for a friend or, uh, I don't want to say play a prank exactly, but, you know, give, give somebody an experience that's unbelievable and kind of twisted and sometimes a little cruel, <laughs> you might want to check this out, and you can use virtual reality for this. We I, Go ahead. What I thought was so fascinating about it is um, what you want to do in magic is you want to exploit what people take for granted. And the most important moment in VR is when you get the whole setup, you play with it a little bit, and then you invite a friend over. And in that moment that you put the VR rig onto their head, you now have these, these, these battle lines drawn that are so natural and so comfortable because you know that you and your friend are experiencing the game. And the game is over here, and you and your friend are over here. And the one thing you would never imagine, never ever imagine, is that your friend is actually in cahoots with the game. So although this game is branded Penn and Teller, many of the games have no mention of Penn and Teller. Because you invite somebody over, you put the, I call it a hat, Randy doesn't like that, you put the hat on them for the VR, and while you're doing that, you're setting up something else. So what happens is something that is truly impossible because the VR couldn't do it and you couldn't do it, but together you can do that and take it absolutely for granted. And everybody, when they have a trick played on them, says, that was awful, you shouldn't have done that, I feel like a fool, let's do it to somebody else. <laughs> and the best thing about Penn & Teller VR, F U U U U and U, is it requires no goddamn plants. <laughs> Come on. Still works. Come on. <laughs> okay. One of the fun ones that's along the lines of what he's talking about, if you're curious, is uh, we came up with this bit that makes kind of a false pitch. It's called immersion therapy. Have you ever heard of this? The idea is if, like, you're afraid of spiders, they take someone who's afraid of spiders and they immerse them in spiders until they have no fear. So we thought, hey, with virtual reality, you can do immersion therapy without taking actual risk. So we set up this immersion therapy thing. The, the catch on this one, we get someone in there uh, fighting spiders with, with, uh, with new, rolled up newspapers in virtual reality, and while they're in virtual reality, the operator can secretly put a real like plastic spider on their hands. So when they come out of VR, they freak the fr they see this on, they lose their shit. And it's very, it's very natural, because when you're showing someone a game, it's very natural to do that. Yeah, to touch now, they have a They have their eyes covered, they can't see you. It's very natural to move someone's hands, so you can load the spiders onto them, and it is, uh, it we've is... Got a, we've got a clip. Oh, um, yeah, we've got, startling. if you want to see when we were in beta, when we were uh, prototyping this, you can see uh, one of our test subjects. Well, let's run it. Let's just run the clip and show. That is a very satisfying sound. Ah! You're, oh, God. you're out of bounds. Oh, okay. Whoops. Cool. Spiders loaded. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she has no idea. She's got plastic spiders on her wrist right now. Congratulations. You survived. All right. Hi. Here, I'm going to take a headset off of you. Oh, okay. Oh, whoop. 
How was that? <laughs> uh, slightly um, intimidating. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> okay. Cool. Here, I'll take the. <laughs> That's entertainment. <laughs> In a nutshell. We had a lot of fun working on this. When, when Penn and I first got together and we talked about what we can do with VR, it was, I, I felt like it was a, a dream come true. You know, I've been thinking about how to use what I learned in magic in video games for about 20 years, and it's only because VR that we, we have this platform now that we can actually do some of this and give the power to, to you guys uh, to, to have this kind of fun with your friends. But working on the project was great. We got to um, recreate some of the things from uh, your life. We got to recreate the Penn and Teller stage. Uh, there's a backstage room that, that VIPs can go in and hang out with Penn and Teller before or after the show called The Monkey Room. And we recreated The Monkey Room in virtual reality. Well, not just that. It's the whole theater. It's our backstage. It's everything is exactly like it is. We're looking at these at this distance on the monitor. I, I don't know which one is the real Monkey Room and which one is the VR one. It really is, if you ever wanted to be in a theater, in Las Vegas, and that theater you wanted to be in was the Penn & Teller Theater. This VR gives you absolutely that experience. It's pretty cool to, to be able to do that. But we're also to go, go uh, you know, if you want to look behind the scenes a little bit, uh, these, these guys, uh, Penn & Teller, uh, were part of the development process, not merely working on all the bits in, from a creative point of view, but actually uh, uh, performing. Uh, we, we even got them down to Dallas, Texas, and got in the mocap suits. You got a shot of that? Oh, <laughs> yeah, let's skip that one, yeah. So uh, there's Penn & Teller in the mocap suit. You can see uh, uh, Teller doing some T poses. Now, uh, uh, Teller's not here today. Teller. Teller's uh, directing uh, Macbeth in uh, Chicago, so he can't be here. And uh, I'm here with plants. So oh. <laughs> no plants! Plants. Uh, Look at her! Teller, Teller doesn't talk, too, so that, you know. Uh, that gives you some, but you know what? We we when we made the first prototype of one of the bits, and the mocap suits feel really nice. <laughs> <laughs> they're 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 tight in a way that's pleasant, <laughs> invigorating. It focuses your attention where you want your attention fo focused. <laughs> I like the mocap suit. I'm wearing one under this suit. <laughs> and I'm happy to show anyone after this. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, yes, I don't, I, I'm stuck, I'm, I don't have anything. Okay, well, we should show Teller. Yeah, let's, show, okay, so Teller, this, this is a shot of, we got a clip of, we, the first time we showed Teller a bit, uh, it's called Window Washer. It's more of a performance art piece that you can play alone, and uh, you wash windows, and we kind of set you up through, after you wash the windows, you're a voyeur into these things. We set up a kind of a punchline. Uh, Teller actually knew what was coming, but this was the first time he was experiencing the Yeah, prototype. he worked on writing this and uh, still fell for it. Watch, watch what happens. Fell being the operative verb. That's Teller fashion plate that he is. This is backstage in the uh, workroom at the Penn and Teller Theater. The Gearbox development team working on the project with uh, me and, and, and Penn and Teller. That guy standing there is Brian Burleson, the producer on the project. Now listen, you're going to hear Teller react here. Seems like you know, just boring stuff. He's washing windows. Uh, the final version, there's some, a really interesting set inside each window. He's up hundreds of feet. Oh, yeah, he's on a swing stage on the side of a giant building. Maybe it was lower. You can kind of see the city almost in the background there. Uh, what you're seeing on the screen is what he's seeing. Oh, here he goes. <laughs> <laughs> that was also my reaction. <laughs> <laughs> it's still frozen. That's so good. <laughs> and the last thing you heard Teller say there is that's so good. And I want to, this is really important to address for me uh, on almost a moral and an ethical issue. Um, uh, Teller and I do a lot of practical uh, uh, jokes. We've done a lot of books and uh, videos. We've done a lot of TV shows where we do pranks on people. And I have a very odd uh, morality on pranks in that I believe that the person who enjoys the prank the most must be the person who is the victim. 
Uh, it has to be done that way. If you do a prank on someone who feels like they have been used or they have been made uncomfortable or they have been injured, uh, you have done an unsuccessful prank. When you watch Teller there, he says, the first thing he says is, oh, fuck. And the second thing he says is, that is so good. And uh, that was really brought into attention when um, in the late 80s, uh, Bell Labs, uh, Rob Pike, Dennis Ritchie, a few of the other guys there, the hardcore guys at Bell Labs, uh, got in touch with, with the two of us, me and Teller, to do a prank on uh, their boss, who was Arno Penzias, who won the Nobel Prize for discovering the 3K of background noise. He was vice president of Bell Labs at the time. And we worked out an elaborate scam where we convinced Arno Penzias that all sorts of artificial intelligence and, um, and virtual reality had happened that had not happened. And we did this over the period of two or three months. We had um, geniuses working on this. I mean, Rob Pike, Dennis Ritchie, who did Deep Thought, the chess machines, all that. We were working as a team on this. And we absolutely blew Arno Penzias' mind. I mean, crazy crazy stuff. It's available online. You can find it on YouTube. It's called Lab Scam. And uh, we ran it on him. And Arno Penzi has said, and this is not an exaggeration. This is not a joke. This is an absolute truth. When we finished the whole scam on him, he was completely freaked out. A half hour later, he said it was a more positive experience than winning the Nobel Prize. That's what he said, and that is what we're aiming for in the pranks. So every one of these, including the spider one and so on, we uh, use what people have taken for granted in that, and in a really safe, loving environment, pretend to take them down. So you always have this moment where your reality is twisted, there's always a scream, there's always a huge surprise, and then there's always complete and utter joy. Yeah, and there's uh, about... There's more than a dozen bits. Uh, I think really quickly. Uh, should we do one live for you? Just do one really fast live? Do you want to? Now, I want to say. I'm going to pick somebody. No, you're not going to pick somebody. I'm going to pick. Sit down. They're not uh, plants. I'm going to pick a plant. No, no, it's not going to be you. You look too planty. Um, uh, we're going to do one. Now, this will not be that powerful because everybody knows we're running a scam and you will see some of this here. But I want to pick. Uh, do you have your hand up? How about you? How about you? Come up here. Right up here. Yeah, right up here. All right. I meant. I met the woman, and it's okay, come on. Yeah, like, like I'm gonna pick the guy instead of the woman. That's fine, that's fine. <laughs> but uh, get, get up, come on, come on, come on. Scamper up, get up here. Get, get him doing? up here, and uh, hey, it can, up. can we They've get Mario up? Us. Mario, can you come out here? This is yeah. Mario, he's one We're of the producers on the project. Up. These are the parameters. Yeah. This is the parameter. We're putting this down because we have the parameter to keep you on. This will be, well, this will be the VR space. Now, when you were doing this, uh, where is he? Where, where is he? Let's get him up here. Yeah, we should have we gone with her. Where you, how about your name? Scott. Hey, Scott, I'm Penn. We're gonna do this thing for you. Now, Scott, we're gonna ask you to play a, play a oops, here we go, here. <laughs> that's, that's the big gag, we trip the people as they come on here. Now, Scott, this is gonna be a little bit weird because they're gonna see some of the prompts we're gonna do. And you gotta imagine, as you're watching this, that you and I are alone in a room. You, I can go off stage. Oh, you go off, yeah. yeah and Mario, imagine as you as and you I are that... alone in the room, and also imagine that I'm wearing a motion capture suit, okay? <laughs> Which I am. Okay, now you ought to put on one of these hats, have you worn? Oh, you've done it, good, good, good. So you can, can I help you put this on here? Now you and I are alone in the room and you're about to do the, the bullet catch. Can we set him up so he's seeing that in there and we want to see this? We'll give you one controller. Move, okay. move him on to the center of the, the yeah, get VR Get a little space. more in the center there here. There we go. Now th what this all is based on is that he doesn't know that I'm hoots with the game. Can I, can I be able to see this too? You'll see some prompts that are for me here. We're gonna do a thing called the bullet catch, Scott. And I'm going to be over here, and I'm going to be shooting when, this, when we finally roll it. I'll be shooting a gun at you, and you'll be catching a bullet in your teeth. Now, I'm going to let Penn on the camera <laughs> talk a little bit. You'll see that. Are we going to be able to hear me, or is it? Uh, I should be talking on there. See, I was in the motion capture suit for this. What we're saying here, if you can't hear it, is that... Um, uh, I'm telling him he's going to catch bullets in his teeth. So Scott, what you're going to do is as the bullet comes near you, you're going to hit the trigger right here, and you're going to try to catch that bullet 
in your teeth, okay? So here we go, and uh, I, at some point I should decade. have a gun. Now we're a he little tired. So how would you like to take over? We'll sit back on our virtual butts while you do the bullet catching, and we'll let you use Teller's teeth. You can have any friend you want do the shooting. Hand them one of your controllers now. I've handed you the controller. Good. Okay. You'll now, experience everything in slow motion on our virtual Vegas stage until you get good enough for our real-time Vegas version. Watch carefully. And when the bullet is just the right distance from you, use your controller trigger to snap Teller's teeth safely around the bullet. Here we go. Ready, aim, fire! <laughs> Nicely done, beautiful. Another one. Good, good, beautiful. You're doing great. Oh, yeah. oh we're doing it again. Keep going. Don't, don't. Oh, I'm. I'm... There you go. Looks like you might have missed one or two, but we think you're ready to do something that nobody, not even Penn and Teller, have ever tried. The bullet catch with a shotgun. You ready? You better focus. It'll take lightning reflexes to catch all these pellets. Catch this. Now you see, if we were alone, if we were alone in the room there, and you had no idea there was anybody else there, that would have fooled you. But if we're going to do this on stage, we got to do something a little different there, because you always want to be a little outside this. Now, are you uh, see see how happy he is? See how happy he is? Oh, and by the way, thank you, Scott. You have a towel for him here? We'll give him a towel backstage. We'll give you a towel backstage there. That's Scott there. And by the way, Scott is a plant. Absolutely. <laughs> get, off, get off the stage, plant. That's, go, go this way, Scott. This is Scott. I this really way. want her. That's Scott there. And these are the uh, three plants here. I'm, uh, I'm Penn Gillette. This is Randy Pitchford. Thank you, Thank guys. You, 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 and you. Thank you so much. Peace Thank out. Thank you. Cheers.